Um, I don't have any more room in the cloud, so we're recording my computer. And I believe it's recording. This okay, is women everybody. playing Hamlet. Woo! Yeah, it is. <laughs> fun. Okay. See ya. I can't play Hamlet. I can't play Hamlet because I am being stalked by Patrick Stewart. That's right. The Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. And I think that members of the Royal Shakespeare Company are stalking me and planning to do me harm. So if Patrick Stewart or any members of the RSC or let's say anyone with a British accent in or any member of the RSC or any member with a British accent in general should show up tonight, would you be so kind as to call the police? I need a verbal response here. Thank you. So how did I get into this situation, you ask? It happened a few weeks ago when my 14-year-old niece visited New York City from Minnesota. The RSC was opening at the Booth Theater and I wanted to impress her. PowerPoint, a picture of Jessica's super geeky computer nerd 14-year-old niece. The caption reads, Emily Ostergaard loves ice fishing, the Minnesota Twins, darts, duck hunting, pulled pork, and Grand Theft Auto. Please forgive her. She'd only seen one play in her life and I thought she's a bright kid. On numerous spelling bees, she'll, she'll get Hamlet. Had a friend in the cast who scored me perfect opening comp tickets, second row, dead center, right where you're sitting. The production starred Patrick Stewart as King Claudius. PowerPoint, a picture of Sir Patrick Stewart with the caption, Patrick Stewart, Golden Globe and Blockbuster Entertainment Award winner. Now, two minutes before the director bounces up on stage to give a curtain speech, she tells us she's decided to do Hamlet the way Shakespeare intended, no intermission. Then she invites us to an opening night Danish fondue reception in the lobby after the show four hours from now. Danish fondue, in case you were wondering. PowerPoint, a picture of a drippy oozing bowl of fondue with the caption, Danish fondue, ingredients, butter, bacon, Gouda cheese, Havarti cheese, and Ham's beer. 20 minutes in, my niece begins to fidget. At the 40 minute mark, she whispers, I gotta check my messages. But before I can stop her, she climbs over a pile of patrons and disappears up the aisle. Five minutes go by, I start to worry. 10, I can't believe, second row, five minutes go by, I start to worry. 10. I can't leave. I mean, second row dead center. 15 minutes, what can I do? She's by herself in the lobby with like ushers and perverts. So slowly and inconspicuously, I bury my totally muted iPhone deep in my winter coat where no one could possibly ever see it. And I text R, the letter U, and the letters OK. She texted back. A picture of Jessica's super geeky computer nerd 14 year old niece beside it, a text message reads, I thought you said Hamlet was better than cats. I text, it's a complicated play. You have to analyze it. She texted. A picture of Jessica's niece beside it, a text message reads, okay, answer me this. If death is an undiscovered country where no traveler returns, why is there a ghost in the play? I text, listen, you little brat, get your ass back in this theater. Don't be like your mother who has the concentration of a gnat who never enjoyed the arts or a meaningful lasting relationship. She texts me back. A picture of Jessica's niece beside it, a text message reads, I want to laugh. Let's go see Clueless the musical. P.S. Yes. A picture of Jessica's niece beside it, a text message reads, P.S. Nat is spelled with a G. I text, don't you get it? To understand Hamlet is to laugh at the absurdity of life. For at the moment we, we laugh, we defeat the absurdity, but, but only for a moment. For when we laugh with Hamlet about the incongruity of society, of politics, of death, of love, the absurdity lingers. Laughter is merely a temporary situation to an eternal problem and Hamlet knows that. But before I could hit send, 
I noticed that the theater had gone strangely quiet. As a matter of fact, all the actors had stopped and then Patrick Stewart. A picture of Sir Patrick Stewart with the caption, Patrick Stewart, Golden Globe and Blockbuster Entertainment Award winner. Stepped down, dead center, looked right at me and said, young lady, you are an immature, rude little twit. And somewhere in the recesses of my brain, it occurred to me, these are not the lines for Hamlet. In the text on the way home after a silent that lasts well into Brooklyn, my niece finished her doggy bag of Danish fondue and said, can I put on Facebook, my Facebook page that you were yelled at by Captain Picard? That night, my cell phone rang. I couldn't believe it. It was Patrick Stewart. I hung up. How did he get my number? He's called three times since. I've never answered. Well, what follows may not be exactly what happened. It's not a mirror held up to nature, but it's kind of sort of what I remember it. So let's start with my old college English professor. That is, what he. this is what he said about women playing Hamlet. Well, it is obvious that Shakespeare intended Hamlet to be played by a woman. Note that lacking masculine virility, Hamlet uses qualities that are associated with the female of the species. He clicks a clicker. PowerPoint, a picture of Sarah Bernhardt playing Hamlet. The caption reads, Sarah Bernhardt as Hamlet. Qualities such as compassion, diplomacy, and the ability to talk for long periods, even when it's obvious that Absolutely no one is listening. He was a total asshole. He clicks the clicker. PowerPoint, a picture of Dame Judith Anderson playing Hamlet. The caption reads, Dame Judith Anderson as Hamlet. Also note that Hamlet does not directly seek revenge against King Claudius first. It makes him suffer. What's more feminine than this? My freshman year, he tried to feel me up after a lecture of Beowulf, asked me to stay after class because he said I had unique insights into Anglo-Saxon lit. Walked right into it. I didn't yet know that no one has ever had unique insights into Anglo-Saxon lit. Anglo -Saxon lit. Hamlet is, after all, a waffling neurotic who is prone to fits of melancholia and violence. <laughs> But who better to play him than a woman? Have you ever noticed that humanities professors lead a sad, lead sad, unfulfilled lives? I'm okay with that. This is why so many less than manly men are attracted to the role, such as Jude Law. He clicks the clicker. A picture of Jude Law as Hamlet. The caption reads, Jude Law as Hamlet, 2008. As you might have already guessed, all the male roles tonight will be played by women. In Shakespeare's day, women's parts were played by men. So tonight we will have a little revenge. It's Hamlet. PowerPoint, a picture of William Shakespeare. The caption reads, verbal scene painting. Not only will women play all the men's roles, but also will use Shakespeare's own staging technique known as verbal scene painting. Shakespeare didn't stage his plays on elaborate sets. Instead, his characters verbally describe the location at the beginning, scenes of thereby appealing to the audience's imagination. Here's how it works. This Starbucks hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweet recommends itself unto our gentle senses. And so we're at a Starbucks. In addition, anything I don't have to tell you will appear on the screen. PowerPoint, a picture of Betty Ashland. The caption reads, Betty Ashland, actress, Starbucks employee of the month, MFA in acting from Minnesota State. I know Shakespeare didn't have PowerPoint. I mean, he was born in 426 years before it was invented, but if PowerPoint had been around, 
think I think you would have used it. Wait, let me get my brain around this. You were cast as Hamlet. This is my friend Betty. <laughs> they both have MFAs in acting from Minnesota State. PowerPoint, a picture of William Shakespeare. The caption reads, MFA, Master of Fine Arts. I used to think that a degree meant something until I found out that every employee at Starbucks has an MFA. Hamlet, not Ophelia. Yes. But Hamlet was written for a man. <laughs> yes, but hundreds of women have played the part. Not only are you the wrong sex, but you're too young. Hamlet's 30, I'm 29. Mm, Olivier didn't get it right until he was 41. Richard Burton, 39. Gilgood, 34. Oh, and God forbid, Mel Gibson, 44. <sighs> I've got to wait five years. 15. You're more of a Gibson than a Gilgood. I was just looking for a friend, someone to share the good news with. <laughs> you don't need a friend, you need a miracle. So, I did the only thing I could do. A miracle. Yeah, I got it. Knowing that I was going to totally blow it. It's hopeless. Shut up and bring me my overpriced caffeine. I contacted Lord Sebastian Derby, the greatest living Shakespeare scholar. After several email attempts, he actually agreed to meet me for a spot of tea. PowerPoint, a picture of Lord Sebastian Derby. The caption reads, Lord Sebastian Derby, author of A Critical Study of Hamlet and Hamlet the Cliff Notes, Anonymous. There is no hotel like the Carlisle, brilliantly positioned on Manhattan's Upper East Side, overlooking Central Park. It is a true New York City landmark. Uh, at the Carlisle Hotel. Very good. They catch on quick. It is the greatest hotel in the world, just as Hamlet is the greatest literary work ever composed. It is transcendent ecstasy. Do you know what Are we transcendent about e ecstasy is? Are we talking about Hamlet or, or the hotel? Uh, both. It is acoustic memories of pre-verbal existence that wakes the intuitive, sympathetic, vulnerable parts of the soul. I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, uh, do you love Hamlet? Sure, but to be honest, I like lots of plays. I mean, everything from Shakespeare to Simon. Um, Simon? Oh, uh, Neil Simon. Um, uh, stop. You've just committed the greatest sin anyone can commit. You mentioned William Shakespeare and Neil Simon in the same sentence. Mr. Derby. Lord. Lord Derby. Hmm. You gotta admit that watching most theater companies' productions of Hamlet is like sitting in the middle of a seat on a really, really, of a really, really, really long flight. I'm right, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Those who do not love Hamlet should be transported to the rural areas. That should be, they should be provided basic shelter tools and a plot of land so they may eke out the middle class mechanism with infecting society. <laughs> Isn't that kind of harsh? Quarantine is the only answer, lest we degrade the gene pool. Hamlet is the master's masterpiece. It is Yahweh, Mount Everest and Big Ben wrapped in one. Hamlet is orgasmic. I tell you all. Oh, I'm tingly. Okay, maybe he didn't say exactly those words, but it's, it's close. Orgasmic. Yes, we are 
Mind you. And in fact, he didn't really have an orgasm. Yes, I did. As my mother back in Minnesota used to say, I was in a pickle. Um, mm, and one more thing. You're too young to play Hamlet. Sarah Bernhardt was 55 when she played the role. Dame Judith Anderson didn't play Hamlet until she was 72. A 72 year old Hamlet. And what's wrong with that? How old was the actor playing King, King Claudius? 130? That's absurd, right? Kind of. This is the paradox of Hamlet. Those who are young enough to play him are too immature to understand him, and those that are mature enough to understand him are too old to remember their lines. Then I found this backstage, the backstage magazine. PowerPoint, a picture of Gwen Dorway. The caption reads, Tony Award winning nominated acting coach, Shakespeare specialist, call 212, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. Wouldn't have done it, but I looked her up on the web and very deep in her Wikipedia page, I found this. A picture of the logo for Wikipedia. The caption reads, Gwen Dorway played Hamlet to excellent reviews. The play closed after one performance. Closed after one performance. I had to find out what that was about. We arranged to meet on stage before the first rehearsal. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or God, I suck. I totally suck. God, I need a smoke. Where's my nicotine? To be or not to be. <laughs> Was I cast? Miss Forsyth, wherever you are, Hell or limbs or wherever cows old fart high school drama teachers go when they stroke out in front of a cl an entire class. I swear we didn't call 911 because we really did think you were leading us to a revelation of exercise. I just want you to know that I forgive you for not casting me. Because you were right. I suck. Right? I, I really, really suck. So what are you going to do about it? Miss Doorway? How long have you been? Uh, long enough. My acting teacher, the great Stella Adler said, life crushes your soul. Theater reminds you you have one. Resume? Oh, uh, got one right here. Uh, Jessica Bisset. Stage name. Real name? Uh, uh, Ostergaard. You look familiar. I get that sometimes. I played Rachel Buttonhole on The Young and the Restless. Buttonhole? <laughs> I was on the show for 15 weeks. Wish it had been longer, but he used the money. Wait, buttonhole. Was that Victor Newman's fun-loving but conniving love interest, the one who died when she accidentally fell off the Grand Canyon viewing platform? Yeah, that, that, that was me. <laughs> you watched the, the Young and the Restless? No, never seen it. Uh, the producers wanted me to bring me back but said they kind of wrote themselves into a corner, but they had my remains eaten by wolves, and I'm also in the new Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, was a prostitute, number three. <laughs> I bet I don't think you'd remember me from that. Why not? Well, I was thrown into the George Washington Bridge during the opening credits. Uh, long shot. Even my mother didn't even know it was me. All right. Warm up. Uh, you come highly recommended. Yes, I know. And and that Tony nomination, what what twenty five years ago? That's that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Two 
nominations two years in a row. Oh, uh, read that it was just the one. And where did you read this? Oh, uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> well, if you got it from Wikipedia, it must be true. Place your middle knuckle in your mouth and bite thus. Oh. Repeat after me. The hamstrung Hamlet hung his hat in the hall. The hamstrung Hamlet hung his hat in the hall. Are you chewing gum? Nicorette? <laughs> De-nicorette. Again. The hamstrung Hamlet hung his hat in the hall. Remove your knuckle. Write a script. Would you like me to? Oh, your first business. Oh, of course, uh, uh, $50 an hour, right? For, what, for level one. For level two, it's 100 per hour. The difference? at level one i will build up your self-confidence i will convince you that you are the perfect person to play hamlet you will walk into every rehearsal and performance knowing that nothing can stop you uh wow uh, and 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 level two i will tell you the truth level two we're sure uh, yes, level two. Okay, begin. Who are you and what did you have in common with Hamlet? What do I have in common with him? <laughs> A 400 year old fictional character. One thing and one thing only, my mother married my uncle just like Hamlet's mother. Just like she marries Uncle Claudius. It's true. She told me at my father's funeral. PowerPoint, a picture of Jessica's father, Bud Ostergaard. The caption reads, in loving memory of Bud Ostergaard, loved ice fishing, the Minnesota Twins, darts, duck hunting, pulled pork, and marbles. Here we are at St. Genesis of the Sorrowful Virgin a charming church located in the suburbs of St. Paul. It's sublime stained glass windows add a touch of color in these times of darkness. We're in a church. So sorry about your loss. Thank you, Father. Your daddy was a good man. Yes. But now he is gone. True. Departed. Yes. Dead. Yes. Ah, death. Your point? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. Hamlet. Puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others that we know not of. You speak with our will. I have an MFA in acting. Really? Wanted to be an actor, but the Lord did call. Did he know? Ah, here comes your mother. Mom. Oh, my sweet little Jesse. So happy you showed. Mom, it's dad's funeral. Of course I showed. Oh, oh, it's just that you're so busy with the acting thing you got going there. Uh, Father Jorgensen, you've met my daughter. She has a huge role in the soon-to-be-released Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh, Mom. She's co-starring with Leonardo DiCaprio. Tell them all about it. Not exactly co-starring. Uh, Mom wrote... Mom, I wrote a little speech. Oh, oh. Now... Don't get defensive like you always do, but I asked Father Jorgensen here to give the eulogy. He has an MFA in acting. So do I. Yeah, but his is from Yale, don't you know? 
Yale. Yes, the big one. Not too shabby, eh? Sure, but an MFA in acting from Minnesota State is nothing to scoff at. Oh, yeah, but it's no Yale. Father Jorgensen, if you don't mind, I have to have a word with my daughter in private. Is there a place we could talk? Oh, there's the coat closet. That'll do just fine. Oh, uh, did you bring the cheesy mashed potatoes? Oh, wouldn't leave home without them. They're in the cooler beside the trout cakes. Jessica and Minnesota mother step into a small closet. A rack of leftover costumes becomes the closet. My goodness, this closet is tiny. The dark paneled walls are scarred with the mark of time and neglect. Uh, while the linoleum floor has been worn down with the souls of so many faithful that have come before, above, Darkness betines the ceiling. Ma, what did you want to tell me? Oh, I almost done. Above, darkness betines the ceiling with a sorrowful reflection of death and decay. Okay, so it's like this. We're going to finish up here and then we're gonna take the cooler over to your Uncle Wayne's boat for a special announcement. <laughs> announcement? Wait, you sound odd. Odd? Yeah, you're talking kind of funny, aren't you? This is how I talk. No, you sound different. Mom, I've been speech training. I've lost my Minnesota accent. You didn't have an accent. You talk just fine. All the world's got an accent, not Minnesotans. It's taking me months of training, but now I speak what's called standard American. There's nothing standard about it. Mom, what do you need to tell me? <sighs> Are you emotionally capable of handling it? I don't know until I hear it. Oh, heck, Jess, I've got myself in a pickle. I'm in love with Wayne. Wayne? Yes, Wayne. Do you mean Uncle Shorty? Wayne and I have been in love for a decade and now that your father is, is no longer in the picture. <laughs> Ma, he's not even in the ground. Uh, true, but it won't be long now. You're not announcing that you're getting married. That's not it. God. Cause we got married last night. Mom. Uh, Father Jorgensen said we were rather enthusiastic for each other and that he'd better just go ahead and get us conjugal before we committed a mortal sin. Mom, I don't know what to say, but I, I'm happy for us. Disappointed. Oh, in Wayne. In both of you. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. This is embarrassing, right? Uh -huh. Right. Oh, for Christ's sake. Who would have thought my daughter, the theater major, who's always preaching to the neighbors about same-sex marriage, they just want to rake their stupid leaves, but you got to be out there talking about how your friends should be able to marry a goat if they want to. I never said anything would be about be so close-minded as to deny her mother happiness. Mom, marry Shorty if you want, but wait a while. How long? How long do you want us to wait? Give me a time frame. A year. I could be as dead as your father in a year. Life's transitory, don't you know? Did you have feelings for dad? All kinds of feelings, but not like what I got for Wayne. He made love last night and it was pretty darn good. Oh my God. I'm not going to stand in a closet at my father's funeral discussing my mother's sex life. Oh, what would you like to talk about? Dad. 
Uh, sex with him, not so good. That pill he did, took didn't work for four minutes, let alone four hours, don't you know? Mm. I'm not doing this. Couldn't find the cheesy mash, so I absconded with a banana. Hope that's okay. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, betcha. You know, you're not supposed to put bananas in the cooler. Oh, heck. Wayne doesn't know nothing about food. Wayne! You put the bananas in the cooler again. Told you not to do that. <laughs> you, you married my mother to my uncle two days after my father's death? Well, if we're going to talk, we should go back in the closet. No, I'm not going in the closet. Hmm. I sense in you a Hamlet-like philosophical vacuum. What? No, no. Hmm. In, in fact, you're looking for the immutable essence of self. I don't know what you're talking about. Your soul. Well, sure, who is it? Ah, there is no real soul lurking behind our actions. We are just selfish, distrustful beings that are hunkered down in our individual NORAD mountains, constantly strategizing against each other. It might look like we're loading the dishwasher or taking the kids to school, but in fact, we, like Hamlet, are plotting our next move in the nuclear standoff that is life. Look, Father, it's been real, but I'm not interested in your Wikipedia answers. Oh, they don't allow Wikipedia at Yale. Oh, and by the way, you're too young to play Hamlet. PowerPoint fades and we are back at the theater. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. Stop. Who is Hamlet? Uh, Hamlet is uh, a character in Hamlet. Give me particulars. Does he have friends? One, Horatio, and two fake friends, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Is he violent? Really? Regretful? Sometimes. Funny? He's got dry wits. Vengeful? In the last two minutes of the play. And who are you? If you're to play the greatest role ever written, you must know thyself. I'm... Yes? Not sure what you're... Do you have friends? As of this morning, I have 751 Facebook friends. I mean real friends. One. Are you violent? I once slapped a man so hard I knocked his pictures out. A third story with him. Regretful. I immediately apologized. Funny. Knock, knock. What? Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Hamlet. Hamlet who? Hamlet, let the dogs out! Woo! 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 So the answer is no. Do you really want to play this role? Sure, of course. It's a great opportunity. Right, right? Uh, yeah, right. Homework assignment. You are to take the contents of this bag and build Hamlet's purse. Purse? You cannot play a man unless you walk in his shoes and you cannot understand a woman until you carry her purse. It'll... Let me get this straight. You want me to take this stuff home and build Hamlet's handbag? Like, with my own 
like good with my hands. If you are going to dig deep into Hamlet's psyche, you must dig deep into her purse. Tonight you will build it. Tomorrow you will bring it to rehearsal. That night's rehearsal, total disaster. Like Hamlet being performed on the Hindenburg. Then in the middle of the night, I was struck by a brilliant idea. If I had to dig deep into Hamlet's psyche, why not see a psychiatrist? Not for myself, I'm perfectly normal, but you know, as, as Hamlet. That's right, I was going to play Hamlet during the session without the psychiatrist knowing and see if he could bring me any insight. Genius, admit it. I'm a genius, right? Uh, sure. Right. PowerPoint, a picture of a bearded Freudian male psychiatrist. The caption reads, Dr. Max Feltenberg, licensed mental health professional, PhD in clinical psychology, Long Island University. Hey, welcome to my lavish office located near the intersection of Broadway and Central Park West. Isn't my partial view of Columbus Circle one of the finest greenery of the park? Delightful, but soothing. Yes. Mm. Nice view. Uh, you are... Jessica. And what brought you in today, Jessica? I'm... unhappy. Aren't we all? I have tons of unresolved emotional baggage. My father died. Ah, how long ago? Two months, not even two. Wow, grieving is normal. And I was jumped over for promotion at work. Ah, which causes anxiety, also normal. In addition, I, 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 I think I might have unhealthy sexual feelings towards my mother. Oh, how do you know it's unhealthy? Eh? I just sort of assume that any sexual attraction towards my mother was unhealthy. Oh, right. Oedipus complex. Oh, do women suffer from that? Uh, generally, no. Let's call it uh, pre-edible ambivalence. Mm. In addition, I, I can't seem to take any action. Ah, yes, Jimmy Carter syndrome. And yet, I have doubts. Doubts? Yeah. Is the ghost real? Or is it my imagination? Or could it be the devil tempting me? I'm oh, so sorry, uh, ghost? Oh, uh, the ghost of my father. Uh, uh, it's been kind of following me. Paranormal mm, activity coupled with demonic possession. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I was just thinking that the ghost might be the devil tempting me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not actually seeing the devil. Ah, oh, strike, demonic, possession, uh, constipation. Uh, I hadn't considered that, but I guess I've been a little constipated. Uh, but more importantly, I'm, I contemplated suicide. Ah, yes, that is more important. When was the last time you had an orgasm? Uh, your last orgasm, the date. So I'm generally write that down, but the dates, but my orgasms, but let's just say it's been a while. Decreased libido, constipation, uh, coupled with mood swings. Now that you mention it, one moment I'm 
awestruck by the ghost and the next I joke about it. I'm talkative yet silent, given to sudden flashes of anger yet consumed by melancholy. Okay, okay. When you cough or sneeze, do you have leakage? Leakage? Yeah, urine trickle. Uh, what does that have to do with- I, I think I know what your problem is. That was fast, wasn't it? You are- Yes. Uh, uh, suffering from existential ontological overload. Ooh, I like how it sounds. <laughs> In other words, uh, you're hormonal. Excuse me? Premenopausal. Mm. What? It's rare with women your age, but not entirely unheard of. Uh, I'm making you a prescription for a monoamine oxidase inhibitors in a-, a Mono line what? Um, oh, <laughs> antidepressants. Uh, in addition, I'm starting you on a hormone replacement program. Yeah. Wait, wait. Uh, are you saying I have hot flashes? Okay, now I must warn you, these drugs have side effects, including anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, irritability, nervousness, hallucinations, and suicidal thoughts, but... You already suffer from these, so it shouldn't be a problem. Hold on. Are you insinuating that my profound philosophical insights and neurotic pessimism are female problems? While I'm at it, I'm going to throw in a really good vaginal lube. Veggie Max, it's more slippery and thin synthetic motor oil. For God's sake. Uh, wait. Uh, then, of course, it happened. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with this special observance that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature. When do you open? You know. Do you think you're the first actress who ever tried this? Others have? Oh, ah, numerous times. The first time it happened with me was the actress playing Blanche in Streetcar. Unfortunately, I had her committed before I knew what she was up to. In retrospect, her protests as she was led away now seem particularly gut-wrenching. You knew I was playing Hamlet? Oh, I have an MFA in acting. Yeshiva University. Go Maccabees! How did I know you were going to say that? You're about to play one of the most baffling and contradictory roles ever written. You might need a little help. Thanks, Doctor, but I think I can play Hamlet without oxidizing force. Uh, Hamletta! Hamlet is a great play because it identifies the human character. Which is? There is no real self lurking behind our actions. In the subterranean battleground of id, ego, and superego, our soul is nothing more than a fluctuating tangle of conflicting impulses. We like Hamlet, are not a well-ordered system, but only a, a pile of varied passions and shifting psychological states that are adrift in a flat, feral, forsaken universe. Ah, smart move. The best known 33 lines in the history of theater. Take it again. 
this time without hyperbolics. As Stella Adler said, the play's not in the words, it's in you. Ready? I shall cue you. Uh, King Claudius says, the harlot's cheek beautied with plastering art is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than is my deed to the most painted word. Oh, heavy burden. And Polonius answers, I hear her coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. Go. To be. Or not to be. That's rather obvious, isn't it? Or not to be. Why such a long pause? I'm being dramatic. Paraphrase the pause and begin again. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows. Stop! Hamlet is not a ham. Again. To be or not to be, that is the question. Understand. What are you doing? trying to play all the emotions. All what emotions? Well, I've analyzed the text. In, in these 33 lines, there are 20, 52 emotions. I worked it all out. 52? Watch. <laughs> hmm. Uncertainty. To be or not to be is the question. Indignation. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, introspection, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and then resignation, to die, to sleep no more, realization, mixed with resignation, mixed with disappointment, mixed with reflection. My sick say we him the heartache and the Stop. thousand. What? In all my years coaching, I have never seen anyone who was. Yes. So completely and utterly unprepared to play Hamlet. I. Wait. I have more. Not only can you not play Hamlet, but it's entirely possible that your children will lack the emotional depth needed. You lack even the DNA to play the role. This isn't easy. I could use a little encouragement. Have you finished your Hamlet handbag? I haven't been able to get it right. That's exactly what I expected. Lesson over. You know, maybe, just maybe, it's not me that's the problem, but the play. Excuse me? It's just a simple revenge plot. Hardly original. Revenge was a popular theme when in the season, and Shakespeare needed a script quick, so he plagiarized another playwright's play. Creative adaptation is the seed of genius. He even wrote so fast he made mistakes. Mistakes? In Hamlet. Hamlet declares that death is an undiscovered country from which no traveler returns. Yet, just moments earlier, he has a conversation with the ghost of his father. So, obviously someone returned. The ghost is in a parallel ethosphere between life and death. Early in the play, Horatio states that Hamlet was at the battle where his father killed Fortinbras's father, the king of Norway. Yet, 
late in the play, the gravedigger says that Hamlet was born at the castle that very same day. Your point. It's a mistake. It's an abstractual element. And what are all these Latinized names about? Claudius, Francisco, Marcellus? It's Denmark. You'd think they'd throw in a Lindenstrom or a Johannesburg. This borders on sacrilege. And if it's way, 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 it's way, way, way too long. 21,551 words. Shakespeare never blotted a line. <laughs> oh, shit. Who was he paid by? What was he paid by, the word? My sophomore year in college, I played Ophelia in an uncut version. I had to drop out of the play in the fifth act because I had to graduate. Repeat after me. Hamlet is the Mona Lisa of literature and Shakespeare the Leonardo of playwrights. Say it or I shall not return. Hamlet is the Mona Lisa of literature and Shakespeare blah, 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 blah. He blah. was a genius. He was a genius. A genius who mixed dazzling verbal brilliance with idiotic puns and sober moronic fart jokes. My God. Does your generation believe anything is holy? I agree with Tolstoy who felt that Hamlet was nothing more than a thin plot line that Shakespeare manipulated in order to pontificate. And where did you read this? Wikipedia? No, no. It, it, it was. It was Wikipedia, wasn't it? And other credible sources. Goodbye. Wait, wait. I beat out dozens of other actors through a process of four auditions over a two week period to make final callbacks. And I got the role. I have the DNA. A bicycle bell, a streetwise and hip bicycle messenger rolls in. I hate to interrupt this thing you got going here, but uh, I'm looking for one, Jessica Bissett. Yeah, from your agent. <laughs> By the way, he's pissed. He wanted me to tell you to your face. Turn on your phone. Here, sign here. He hands what? Jessica a clipboard, she signs, she opens the note and reads. What is so important as to interrupt a rehearsal? Been offered a part. <laughs> what part could possibly be more important than Hamlet? None of your business. Uh, it's uh, customary to place a few shillings in the palm of the individual who just risked life and limb almost getting George twice to deliver this message. What part? They got a problem at The Young and the Restless. An actress quit. And they're doing an emergency rewrite and they want to fly me to LA. They want me back. I thought your character fell off a Grand Canyon viewing platform and was eaten by wolves. Well, they want to bring me back as Rachel Buttonhole, the evil twin sister. Oh, you're Rachel Buttonhole. I knew I knew you. Here, take it and go. Oh. I may offer some advice. Human beings aren't capable of philo philosophical cognizance. We are merely designed to outrun our predators, attack our food source, and seek revenge. That's what makes Hamlet so totally awesome. Revenge. Who are you to give advice on Hamlet? Oh, I have my MFA in acting. Juilliard. Get out! I'm not just trying to help. Oh, oh uh, by the way, you're too young to play Hamlet. Rachel Buttonhole's evil twin sister. You take this over Hamlet. It's a hell of a lot of money. And a 20 week contract with an option to extend and first class airline ticket. <laughs> instead of playing the greatest role in the history of the theater. Which, according to you, I have no talent to play. Not yet. 
Hamlet or Buttonhole? Your answer? To play Rachel Buttonhole or to not play Rachel Buttonhole? That's the question. Whether it's his nobler, like, is this why Hamlet delays? She needs to think. We all need to take an intermission in life in order to contemplate things. PowerPoint, a picture of Lord Sebastian Derby. The caption reads, Lord Sebastian Derby, author of A Critical Study of Hamlet and Hamlet, The Cliffs Notes, Anonymous. Sterilization! Oh God, you again? That is the only answer for those who do not understand Shakespeare. Did you know that Shakespeare's complex syntactical constructions and grammatical anomalies cause heightened brain activity during brain scans? It's true. His habit of nouning verbs and verbing nouns forces the brain to work at a higher level of evolutionary consciousness. Do you mind? I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of a soliloquy here about intermission. Uh, did you know that when Shakespeare's Hamlet was first performed, it did not have intermissions? The five-act structure and the intermissions were added later. Intermissions were needed once the theater moved indoors. The stage was lit by candles, and so they needed time to relight. Please go away. Hamlet! <laughs> I'm tingly. <laughs> Get out. Sterilization. To have an intermission or not to have an intermission? That is the question. PowerPoint, a picture of William Shakespeare smiling. The caption reads, intermission. End of act one. I need to pee. <laughs> I actually <laughs> do need the intermission. Me too, it's a mission. It's a mission. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fabulous job, ladies.
she's back. Yeah, I was just reading the chat. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yep, yep. I, I actually wanted to send this script to Kurt and be like, where can I pull an audition monologue from this? I was yeah, thinking I, the, the opening like thing about talking about Patrick Stewart or when I'm talking to the guy about this is just a revenge plot. Like this play is the thing about the mistakes yeah the absolutely but i don't know where i cut it i kind of think the story about talking about the the niece and everything but i feel like it's it's probably too long it would need to be cut in certain areas but you guys are hilarious yeah. you're cracking me up <laughs> i uh i'm already so in my next for thing but i had my odds uh, so that beard that i had is the jewish guy was oh my god that's people. hilarious I can't see you all. I'm just staring at myself. <laughs> but you're so cute. We're just well, I know that, cat, but I don't want to look at myself. <laughs> I'm going to look at my, my guns. Whoa. Big, baby. Heck yeah. I'm just getting, I'm just pumping my iron here every couple of days. I'm like, they're going to get big. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, the beard I had as the Jewish uh, psychiatrist was a uh, Afro wig that I had to pin like eight bobby pins on each side to stay, and so I I didn't realize I didn't know how much time I'd have to change back into derby, so I like literally ripped out hair like just saying oh, that. Oh. I, I, I and I had know plenty of time. I had so much time. I was like, damn it. Oh no. <laughs> well, yep. Did merch in Venice, you can do that for Shylock, but God don't record it because it's probably bordering on like racism. I do have Merchant of Venice, by the way. And I um yeah, we did it uh a Bart and the Burbs kind of uh thing early in quarantine, but I have not oh. done it. I have not done it for uh no beard yet. There's actually a ton, there's like much ado. Uh there's a ton I haven't done. No beard. Coriolanus. Coriolanus. I know. I'm on it. But uh, so you know how you said like, I, and I actually like your idea better than one year, like revisiting something we already did. Um, because I don't know. I like that. Like it, it, we can like say like, hey, we had a rehearsal, you know, <laughs> and then we oh. did again. but um, so I've been really working on Cymbeline, which is so long. Come God. back on camera, everyone. <laughs> so many, I have my next costume on, so I didn't want to ruin this. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, someone come on. Um, one, so but okay. Cymbeline that I've been working on, um, Cymbeline that I've been working on, like, has, I mean, some of them don't come in until later, and then some of them start and then don't end. But, like, for the most part, it has some pretty awesome characters that, even if you're not throughout the whole thing, are pretty awesome. And I'm like, it has so many that I think I could do, like, a majority of everyone that's done a no beard and still cast them in it and still give them something at least fun to play with. Wow. Um, but it will probably be longer if I don't cut out. I, th I think it can be done cutting out the whole war part of it. Uh, if you just stick to like, you know, like uh, Imogen or Inogen and uh, Posthumous and Cymbeline and stuff, but I feel like uh, it might be fun. It might, that, one, that one might be fun to at least give somebody, I mean, there are a couple of smaller roles that somebody might get like, you know, you might be like lady and like another role, but like it might be fun to like just give somebody one main role to focus on <laughs> rather than yeah. a bunch and play with. Yeah. So I've been working on that. I've been working on Love Labor's Lost. And yes, I do have I do have Coriolanus on on in there. Shannon. Like I said, but when I first Coriolanus. started, when I first started to st cut it, I was like, oh God, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play Coriolanus and I wanna play Ophidius. Okay. I don't just I don't throw know. that out I there. I wanna be Ophidius. I'll give Coriolanus away. I'll I I I don't even know what I would play in that, but uh I wanna do it. Well, you wanna play oh. what? What's the role? 
Aphidius. Aphidius is oh, like Coriolanus and Aphidius are like they have this deep hatred for each other. Like Aphidius is like is the Aphidius is like the big evil guy of it. Mm-hmm. The big evil. Oh, I like that. I like that for you for sure. But is he though? Like you'll have to see the rest. Is I think yeah. what I gave you a villain once, and I was like, "Oh damn!" Uh, Did I? I for, told you. Yeah, oh, I, Titus. Like, wasn't it Titus? You yes, played, I was. Uh, no, I was. I was. No, Edmund. it was uh, King Lear. You played um, Edmund. Edmund. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I told him. you that I had that my actor friend Patrick. Now, granted, he was a few drinks in after our showcase. He's like, "You're a witch." I told Jack and Cordy, I was like, Shannon's a witch. She's like, I'm going to burn you at the stake. You know, back in the day, the witches, they were the really good actors. And I was like, Shannon, you're a witch. And I'm going to burn you. I'm going to burn you one day. Uh, that's that's right. a nice compliment. My, it's a compliment, but it's kind of creepy at the same time. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. He is a great, he's, he's awesome. I did a, we did a, we did a, we did a Meisner thing. Like we prepped and like, I basically started yelling at, like I prepped for something specific. I knew who I was talking in my life and I went off on him really emotional and it was all improvised. And then he went off on me and like, he was yelling at a completely different reason. And we just had, it was intense. It was good. Yeah. It was just an action. It was an acting exercise. Uh, but Patrick's super cool, but like he was very, very drunk. He was very drunk. <laughs> and he went home to his nine month pregnant wife and his two other children. So <laughs> I'm sure. And it was Mother's Day the next day. So I'm sure he had to. But I'll take the compliment. I'll be a witch. Fuck yeah. I'll be a witch. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Are you back to, uh, I love- the, the going against type with you playing a villain you were with reagan oh my god oh yes Ooh. really oh, were. i love that i want to do that for real to be people. honest like i Ray- don't know why people love goner i, I love goner but reagan is, reagan is, is so that much worse. i love her i love yeah, her i loved that i would do that all day, every day. That would be the role, like because of that, because of doing that reading, like that's the role I want to play. Yeah, I feel like she's so undervalued. She is like cutthroat. Like she's like Ooh. the villain. She kills Goneril. Like how does she not get credit at all? <laughs> oh yeah, God. true, true. Worse than Goneril. She, I mean, they're both yeah. bad, but she's worse. She is because she plays yeah, nice yeah. for way longer, and then she just. Yeah, he it's flips like, it on everyone. I love Reagan. I love that role. Ice cold. <laughs> Ice cold. <laughs> oh God. Oh, are we ready for Act Two? Am I on camera for this? In the sweater. <laughs> am I am I on for this or not? It's just the humanities professor. I think it's just the and humanities. I, and I know if you want to take a little short break. Yes, Shannon, girl. Look at that. All right, I'm going off. <laughs> She Don't get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. All right, I'll start this. Uh, starting? Okay. I'll start it. I'll read this little bit, even though I don't really need to read it. But um, you want me to read it? Um, oh, sure. Go ahead. If you, I thought you wanted a break, but go ahead. <laughs> oh no! Lights oh, no. up. On the, lights <laughs> up on the humanities professor. William Shakespeare, Mass murderer he clicks a clicker a picture of angry william shakespeare the caption reads william shakespeare mass murderer in 1891 shakespeare connoisseur eugene shiflin set out to introduce every bird mentioned by shakespeare to north america he clicks his clicker a picture of a 19th century man in a top hat the caption reads Eugene Schleschlein, 1827-1906, bird lover and Shakespeare fan. Did you know starlings are not native to America? He clicks the clicker and a picture of a starling. The caption reads, starling, scientific name, Steranus vulgaris. To fulfill his ambition, Mr. Schleschlein imported from Europe 60 starlings and released them in Central Park. Today, 
over a century later, there are hundreds of millions of starlings in North America. Their droppings have been linked to numerous diseases caused by breathing airborne fungal spores that originate in starling fecal matter. He clicks his clicker in a picture of a startling taking a poop. The caption reads, contained in starling droppings, E. coli, salmonella, cryptococcus, and paratapagulacus. And did you know that at 5.40 p.m. on October 4th, 1960, some 70 years after Mr. Scheifelin set forth his Shakespeare-inspired echo terror, a cloud of starlings numbering at least 20,000 flew into the path of a passenger plane taking off from Logan Airport, Boston. Not only did they lose engines, but hydraulics. He clicks that clicker, a picture of a four engine prop passenger plane. The capture reads Lockhead L188 Electrissa 62 dead, still stands today as the worst accident in airline history caused by bird strikes. I believe that was a plane going over just now. Three score and two dead. And why? because in act one, scene three of Henry IV, part one, Shakespeare mentions a starling. Just be thankful that the bard failed to mention penguins. God knows what would have happened. We all bump into Shakespeare during our lifetime. Some his words, some his philosophies, some his starlings. A humanities professor exits and Emily Ostergaard, Jessica's niece, enters. Like Minnesota accent to the audience. Hi everyone, it's me, Emily Ostergaard, Jessica's niece. She complained about me earlier. Took me to see Hamlet when I was 14. Danish fondue, don't you know? PowerPoint, a picture of Jessica's niece with the caption, Emily Ostergaard loves ice fishing, the Minnesota twins, darts, duck hunting, pulled pork and grand duck Jessica left out a whole bunch when she told that story. In fact, I felt really bad for what I did. I mean, awful. So that night I texted Patrick Stewart and told him how sorry Jessica felt for interrupting his performance. He texted back. He points to the screen PowerPoint, a picture of Sir Patrick Stewart with caption as a text message. It reads, how did you get my number? Oh, I texted him that it wasn't that hard. I'm a teenager and I'm good with the computers, but that's not important right now. What's important is that Jessica feels really bad and I'm worried that she might even try to off herself, don't you know? Um, couldn't you give her a call and let her know that it's okay? So he texted back. He points to the screen of PowerPoint, a picture of Sir Patrick Stewart with the caption as a text message that reads, no really, how the hell did you get my number? I texted him Jessica's phone number. <laughs> I promise I won't bug you anymore if you call her. <laughs> if you are a decent human being, if you have one forgiving bone in your body, you'll call her and forgive her. I don't think he ever did call her. So I posted his personal number to my 2,343 Facebook friends. <laughs> one thing I learned from Hamlet, hashtag revenge. <laughs> Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self slaughter. Words, words, words. I thought you quit. They gave me 24 hours to decide. I will not work with you unless you are steadfastly, steadfastly committed to Hamlet. I am totally committed. Then say it. Hamlet is... The Mona Lisa of literature and Shakespeare is the Leonardo of playwrights. And the ghost? The ghost is in a parallel ethosphere. Let me see if I have time for you next week. 
Could we work now? I don't know. Right now, I'm working with someone else. You are understudy. So oh, sorry, I'm late. It's not spring forward, forward, spring back. It's, it's fall back and spring forward. Well, now I know. Betty? Mm. Jessica! You're my... Mm, understudy, yeah, that's right. Tough role, huh? Oh, you know each other. We both got our MFAs from Minnesota State. Isn't that wonderful? Reunion over. Time to work. But have you finished your Hamlet handbag? I no, no, I, I, I've not been able to make much progress. I've got mine right here. <laughs> Starbucks actress holds up her completed Hamlet handbag, a shitty patchwork of parts and pieces slapped together. It has no point and looks like crap. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. I'm right, aren't I? Why don't you go to work on yours and let us, who are committed to the role, rehearse? Gwen turns her back on Jessica. Now, Betty, I must say you're coming along nicely. Thank you. Seldom have I come in contact with such a Shakespearean talent. Really? Wow. I have no doubt that the bard had you in mind when he composed the melancholic prince. She really that good? No. She only paid for level one. Hmm. Guess what? I downloaded a Hamlet video game app. A Hamlet video game? Yeah, it wasn't much fun. No. It takes about four hours to play and then nothing happens until the last two minutes. <laughs> uh, warm up. Knuckle in. Repeat after me. The suckling, sucky, suckling, sucked the suckatar. That night, I was left with no other choice but to get drunk. PowerPoint, a picture of a bar. The caption reads, Shake's Beer, Literary Pub, Happy Hour, All Day. A crappy bar, a rough, tough, and tattooed male bartender wearing a long, dark coat. Welcome to Shake's Beer. A local watering hole near the NYU campus where humanity professors stave off the boredom of their empty existence by complaining about how they outgrew their wives and so they were forced to sleep with a grad student in order to get the intellectual stimulation they needed only to have the grad student leave three years later because, to quote her, you're suffocating me. Note how the aroma of watered-down Heineken and discarded copies of Atlantic Monthly gives the place its feeling of death and decay. What can I get the little lady? Wait. First answer me this. Mm. Do you have an MFA? A what? Master of Fine Arts in any subject. Uh, odd question. Do you? Can't say I do. <laughs> You're sure? I ought to know if I have an MFA or not. A little wine for the lady. Don't know. Beer? Not sure. Hard liquor? Perhaps. Ah. Uh, this is so like a woman. What is? To delay. A man would have buried up and ordered. Women take their time. Why? Because we men are more confident. Why? Because men naturally think in obsolete. Ones, zeros, 
on of heaven, hell, you're with us or against us. With such an uncomplicated view of life, the only possible result is confidence. Men are incapable of thinking in variables. Trust me, I've been married it four times. <sighs> Women are nothing but a bunch of contingencies. You switch rules on a dime, like, like a waitress turning tables for maximum profit. As Shakespeare says, God gave you one face and... We make ourselves another. So what will it be? Look, sorry, it's just, I've been waffing for like two days. On what to drink? Even for a woman, that's a record. No, no, I, I can't seem to make up my mind about my career. I, I spend hours weighing the variables, but can't seem to take action. Uh, you're asking the question that so many in the humanities ask. How am I going to pay off my student loans? No, uh, why does... Hamlet delay. Well, that's obvious. He needs time to consider the ghost's intentions. Wrong. He delays because he's waiting for the optimal moment to strike. Ugh. Wrong. He's looking for a definitive proof of King Claudius's guilt. More wrong. He's suffering from existential onecological overload. And what the hell does that mean? I don't know, but it sure sounds good. No, uh, 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 Hamlet delays because he's womanly. Indecision, my name is woman. Is not. Oh, uh, God. We men are better at making decisions because we have a short list of characters to play. Husband, father, bartender. Women, on the other hand, have to play many roles. Wife, nurse, teacher, daughter, peacemaker, boss, mother virgin, and whore that's thrown into the George Washington Bridge. Huh? Ah, <laughs> saw you in that movie. You were great as a whore. Hey, everybody, that's that actress that played that whore in that Quentin Tarantino. Oh, my God. You're a racial, you're a racial buttonhole. Oh, my God. I need an autograph. Sure. Uh, on the house. What's that? That's good, that's what that is. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? J Jessica Bissett? That's her name. No, sign it right. Sign it rich a buttonhole. Are you so, and so you're saying Hamlet's character is made up of bits and pieces that are overwhelmed by too many variables causing procrastination. That's correct. Then why does Hamlet take action? Uh, does he? Uh, he manipulates. He plots. Ah, oh, but he fails to take dramatic action until the last two minutes of the play. Oh my god. Oh my. But this doesn't necessarily mean that Hamlet should be played by a woman. Uh, 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 but it does make him a uh, her. What do you want? Hamlet told with black and white masculine thinking? It, it will be a much better play. 
All right, stop, stop, stop. Everyone just stop. I will now present a play within a play. All right. Shakespeare's Hamlet told only with masculine thinking. A clap of thunder, eerie lights, fog, PowerPoint, a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger playing Hamlet. The caption reads, Shakespeare's Hamlet told with masculine thinking. In the haunting light, the ghost of Hamlet's father enters. Hamlet. Hamlet. Hawk, what is this? Uh, so wounds me, thinks is the ghost of my dead father, the king. Son. Tis I. Your lecherous uncle slew me. Slay him. Revenge is mine. Wait, where be my bodkin? Now might I, I don't owe, oh, vengeance. The dead is done and I have slew him. Oh, good boy. Dad? Yes, my son. Oh, a quick question. If, if death is an undiscovered country in which no travel returns, then what the hell are you doing here? You're considering too many variables. All you need to do now is forgive your mother and make babies with Ophelia. I will! Is that what you want? A foolish melodrama? Really? Is that what you want? I mean, no, but... Uh... Melodrama brainwashes us into thinking that the world is an uncomplicated place made up of painfully obvious black and white choices. Hamlet backtracks and sidetracks, but seldom takes action. Why? Because life isn't melodrama. Who wouldn't take decisive action to save Lassie from the snowstorm? And who wouldn't attack the Death Star? It's the Death Star, for God's sake. Real life is more complicated than that. <gasps> My God, you're right. This is why I've never moved from behind this bar. Why well, I've wasted decades on my life in a state of perpetual hesitation. It's why when I get home at night, I mix vodka with whatever happens to be in the fridge rather than walking to the food emporium to pick up a little tonic or orange juice. And it's why you can't make a decision about your career. Not because we're indecisive twits, but because we draw inspiration from the greatest literary character ever written. We are Hamlet. Hamlet. Ah, cheers! Are you sure you don't have an MFA? Uh, positive. But I do. Uh, MFA in acting. University of Alabama, I'm real damn tired. Shakespeare wrote 1,048 roles for men, 175 for women. That's a ratio of seven to one. Is that fair? No. No. Rosalind in As You Like It is the largest female role with only 685 lines. Hamlet, the largest role ever made with 1,480 38 lines, but I don't want to give you the impression that I'm the type of actress who counts lines. I, I never do that. <laughs> that night, I, I tried to memorize. I, I, I now, now, now that learning Shakespeare while intoxicated is not a good idea. I mean, the plays, the thing where I catch the concept of the king became the plays where I'll catch the king and the rest is silence became the rest is science. And worst of all, 
alas, poor Yorick, became alas, poor Yoda. Then at two in the morning, still trying to sober up, I turned on the television and found this. A picture of the Home Shopping Network logo. The caption reads, Master Baker in a Box, item number 323. And now we're back with the queen bee of the Home Shopping Network, Miss Darla Lee Day. Oh, succulents. That's one succulent leg of lamb. And to think Master Baker in a Box cooked it using patented heat plus technology with only a teaspoon of oil. But now I have a very special author that just came in. A home shopping work network model rolls out a display of colorful handbags. She does a perfect The Price is Right imitation as she models the bags. It's the new coach handbag line based on our famous literary works. We're getting them at a discount because no one reads anymore. Model. We have the sense and sensibility satchel, mm -hmm. <laughs> the heart of darkness devil, and my favorite, the Hamlet handbag. Mesmerized, Jessica drops her script and sits up and watches. PowerPoint, a picture of the Hamlet handbag. The caption reads, Hamlet handbag, item number 1603. Based on Shakespeare's dark prince, indecisive introvert, troubled tragedian, rather bland on the outside, true, but open him up and look what you get. The model unzips. The handbag unfolds into a colorful pentagon of compartments, cubicles, grommets, and rings. Here, within easy reach, are tons of pockets and spaces to organize all those antidepressants you must be taking. The model shows up several monoamine oxidase inhibitors for the best days. Uh-huh, and over here, a bad bog can pour in case you decide to stab yourself. <laughs> oh, 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 and get this. There's also a pouch for your ghost detector pro, but big enough so you can fit the deluxe model which detects paranormal activities at multiple frequencies. <laughs> it all comes together in an interlocking motif made of durable polyester-like fabric so you can jump into Ophelia's grave without worrying about craft stains. <laughs> Last but not least, because Hamlet is a college student, the official logo of Wittenberg University. The final flap reveals the ostentation Wittenberg University logo, which contains the red and white flag of Denmark. Hello? Yes, I'd like to order from 1603 overnight. Wait, let me give you my credit card and, 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 and throw up. Are we ready? I'll kill you. Claudia says, the harlot's cheek beautied with plastering art is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than it is my deed to most painted word. Oh, heavy burden. Then Polonia says, I hear him coming. Let's withdraw my Lord. Enter. To be or not to be. What are you doing? Uh, I've decided to take the role. Where's your understudy? Locked her in the other building. You're fully committed to Hamlet. Yeah. You're sure? Totally. I shall give you one last chance. But only one. Tell me. Where is Hamlet emotionally at this moment in the play? She's alone. 
But doesn't she know that King Claudius and Polonius are spying on her? Well, she does, but she's still alone. Not just alone. She's incommunicado with her soul. Like you ever been uh, in like lots with the soul? I, I was stuck in an elevator once at an equity office. Um, oh, my God's sake! For nearly fifteen minutes, and and there was this other actor that there, but he didn't say much. I'm talking alone, standing on the far edge of a virgin forest in the middle of winter at three in the morning with no tracks in the snowflakes around you alone with your frozen breath with only your passions and thoughts and stillness to keep you company i've been alone in that case, you can make it snow. Excuse me? Make snow. I don't understand. Like, inside? Yes! Let me get this straight. You, 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 you want my performance to, to change the atmosphere conditions within the theater so that it it starts snowing. At this moment in the play, Hamlet finds her authentic, perishable self. She, like all women, is trapped in a lifelong masquerade where she is all things to all men, but never herself, except when she's alone when one reaches that rare moment of self-realization, the only thing that can happen is snow. I don't know how to tell you this, but the chance of that happening is, is, is pretty small. I'm right, that, that's not gonna happen. I will give you one last try. I shall cue you. Make snow. Make snow. Right. The harlot's cheek, beautied with plastering art, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, heavy burdened. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. <clears throat> to be. What is that? Oh, it's uh, it's it's my my Hamlet bag. You made that. Yeah, I I think it shows my my deep understanding of of, of the character. You constructed it. Yes. With your very own hands. Yeah. You didn't pick it up from the discount bin at the handbag factory store on West One Fifty Ninth. Me? No. no. That's strange, because I did. I can explain. <laughs> I was correct about you. Lesson over. Gwen, you, you, you can't leave me. What do you want? To start over with level one? No, no, I, I, I want the key. Key? <sighs> to playing Hamlet. It's, it's as if Shakespeare leaves Hamlet still in the box, assembly required. Hamlet comes fully assembled from the very first line. Shakespeare doesn't assemble Hamlet. Well, who does? The actor playing Hamlet assembles Hamlet. With? their own complete self. And thus, we're back to the first question. Who are you? And what do you have in common with Hamlet? 
Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It's not you, Jessica. It's your age. I mean, no animosity. It's just a simple statement of fact. You and your hyperlinked friends will be the first generation in 400 years who will not get Hamlet. Because you travel light, light on philosophy, light on self. And thus you will forego the great roles and the existential angst that comes with. Instead, you will accept Prozac over Plato, Nicorette over Nietzsche, tranquilizers over tragedy. And thus, you will never know snow. Did you know that Shakespeare invented the name Jessica? It's true. It's one of the 1700 words he invented. Just pulled it out of his ass. That's talent, real talent. Well, I'm screwed. Jessica improvises with the audience about how hopeless her situation is. She might even ask their advice on what she should do next. Then a voice Hello. comes from the wings. Hello. Everyone there. Jessica. The Chris. Gildenstern. No, no, I'm Rosie. She's Gilda. <laughs> That's what I meant. What are you doing here? We've come all the way from LA to save you. No, she means see you. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, my goodness. This is where you're doing your little drama. What's it called, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, the Hobbit. Uh, yes, I know it. No, 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 Hamlet. It doesn't matter what it's called. The important thing is that you are standing up for your principles, for, um, for, uh, oh, what's it called? Art. Oh, for art. Can, can I give some advice? Sure. You're much too tall. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, um, I, it. I love the smell of an empty stage. Oh, the dust, the filth, the ruined lives. It's so inspiring. What are you doing in New York? Oh, well, we were passing through on our way to England, and we thought we'd stop by to let you know that you did the right thing by not signing that contract. Do you realize what would have happened if you had taken the part of Rachel, Rachel Buttonhole's evil twin? Oh, uh, your life would be hell. Mm. Television <laughs> acting is a fate worse than death. Mm. Did you know that this morning my limo was late? Again. <laughs> I had to wait on the curb for nearly 20 minutes. Oh, you wouldn't want to suffer through that, would you? Well, no, but... Well, and just now, out front, we were mugged by autograph seekers. I'm tired of being admired. Well, you don't want to be mugged by autograph seekers, do you? I guess not. And to top it off, tomorrow they're forcing the entire cast of The Young and the Restless to take a luxurious, all-expense-paid cruise to England for a week of whining and dining. Well, 
if you had signed that contract, you'd be suffering this fresh hell with us. Isn't that right? <clears throat> right? At least one of us has come to our senses. <laughs> Look, I've got a real chance here to play one of the greatest roles in history of stage. A character that gets out against a sea of troubles to... To defeat the evil trolls. Don't say no more. You've made up your mind. Come, let's not trouble this fine thespian further. Our limo awaits. <laughs> what am I doing? Until a few weeks ago, I would have been happy to live in Hollywood and, and spend the rest of my life at a soap as a soap opera star. Maybe I made a mistake. I, now that I think of it, Hamlet's not that great. He's nothing more than a melodramatic little twit whose delay causes seven unnecessary deaths. Seven? Wow. That's more than the young and the restless kills off in an entire season. And we women should be insulted that this Danny, this hysteric, this unbalanced introvert should be handed down to us. We don't want the leftovers. Well, if you did want to change your mind, I brought the contract. Ahem. What? what? <laughs> oh, um. And I brought a potato. Um, a pen. You brought a pen. A pen. <laughs> Ladies, did you did you really come here to see me? Oh, we sure did, sweetie. Be honest. We are being honest, aren't we? Aren't we? Uh, oh, I'm tired of being admired. The producers of The Young and the Restless didn't ask you to stop by? Oh, no, no. You're playing me. Oh, the, the producers didn't ask you to stop by, did they? Oh, no, it was Gwen, your acting coach. Uh, what? <laughs> well, what she means is... Um, a Gwen called you? Well, uh, may, maybe. Uh, the Hobbit is just is too hard. The Wood Elves and the Lake Men cannot be defeated unless you have the magic key, which you do not have. Jessica, face it. You're no Hamlet. Get out. Well, don't be mad at us. We have your best interest at heart. You do television. Won't be happy. But you have your student loans. A woman playing Hamlet is madness. In this postmodern world, it's impossible to make anything of your narrow, fragile existence. All we can do is sell our self to the highest bidder and abandon all hope. All right, if you won't leave, I will. Jessica, well darn. We tried. What now? Oh, uh, we better go with Miss a, a Zeppelin. A boat. We're taking a boat. Our <sighs> boat. To England. Yes, to England. PowerPoint, a picture of a crappy New York apartment building. The caption reads, Gwen's apartment, 164th in Amsterdam. Welcome to my tiny apartment. It's only 500 square feet, but because of my innovative use of space and color, it feels much bigger. You never played Hamlet. What are we talking about? I went to the equity office, researched every part you've ever played. They have no record of you playing Hamlet, but you know what I did find? 15 years ago, the young and the restless, and, 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 and you know what else? 
a Callius commercial. Who the hell do you think you are giving lectures on a Hamlet when you've done scraps and hot boner pills? And the suitcase? I'm leaving New York. Oh. Oh. I'll get you a refund. No, 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 no. You'll need it. I don't live in a crappy rent controlled apartment begging my agent for loans for comp tickets. Yes, I asked around and I found out about you. And now you're just being obnoxious. <laughs> you called your friends at the Young and the Restless and, and had them plot against me. So what if I did? You paid for a service and I delivered. Delivered? What? Insults and emotional abuse? You didn't come to me because you wanted instruction on how to play Hamlet. I didn't? No. You came to me because you wanted to be talked out of playing Hamlet. Did not. Then why did you ask for level two? What? At level one, I build up your self-confidence. I convince you that you are the perfect person to play the part. At level two, I tell you the truth. Which is? No one is ever ready to play Hamlet. Not Burton, not Bernhardt, not you. Admit it. You wanted me to give you permission to let this extraordinary once in a lifetime opportunity slip from your fingers. Why would I do that? Because in order to play Hamlet, you must bring yourself to the role. Up until now, you've simply accepted the roles in which life cast you. That's the truth, isn't it? Isn't it? And I change roles on a dime. At work, I, I play the role of an employee. When I'm, when I'm with my niece, I play the role of an aunt. And in bed, I play the lover. Or if, if cast the virgin or, or the harlot. On my way over here just now, I, I ran into a Quentin Tarantino coming out of the Carlisle Hotel. And he offered me a job playing a ninja in his next film. And then guess what I did? I, I, I instantaneously switched roles and played the thrilled starlet and flirted with him. I mean, who in their right mind flirts with Quentin Tarantino? And then I'm smoking while using nicotine, which is, which is, which is gonna kill me. And then Patrick Stewart is stalking me. And, and, and I, I didn't want you to talk me out of Hamlet. I already did that myself. I wanted you to answer a question that has plagued me all my life. Ask. Who am I? You are the roles you play. Well, in that case, I'm a, I'm a 29 year old girl from, from St. Paul with an MFA in acting from Minnesota State, don't you know? And well, wait, wait, I just said, don't you know? Oh, oh God, heck. My accent is back and oh, go crap. I just said, oh, heck. <sighs> Jessica. Jessica. Far off, a ghostly distant church bell tolls. A picture of an eerie graveyard. The captain reads, a graveyard near the Port Authority bus terminal. Fog, darkness. A male grave digger enters with a shovel and bucket. Oh, what we've all got in common is we're all made of meat and we all end up the same when we're buried six feet deep. <coughs> There'd be little difference when it comes to you and me. We're pretty much the same except in how we pee. Ophelia, she be drowned and get you drank some poison because they both found out way too late that that boy's wearing an apron. Ah. Ah. Here I be on this dark night in a graveyard, no less. The dim 
stars of fake candles while the inky blackness would scare off the best of men, but not me. I am not the best of men. <laughs> Wait. Who goes there? Unfold yourself. Hi, I, I, I'm Jessica. I'm just trying to find the New York airport shuttle. What are you doing? Uh, 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 what does it look like I'd be doing? I'd be digging a grave. A grave? Uh, you're, you've wandered into a graveyard. You're kidding. Uh, and you know why I be digging this grave? Because someone died? Cause I be stuck graving mad! Get it! <laughs> stuck graving. It be a pun. This is like your job. Like you dig graves like for a living? <laughs> Graves don't dig themselves. What you be doing here so late at night? Guess I lost my way. Uh, and the Port Authority bus terminal is... Uh, God, you, you did just do that. You, you dug up a human skull. Oh, uh, happens all the time. That's so gross. No, why this skull be here? No. Cause it's cemetery lifestyle. <laughs> Get it? Sedentary cemetery. Get it? Yeah, I got it. Ah. <laughs> when you bury a cat, you don't give a grave, you dig a catacomb. <laughs> Get it? That's really annoying. <laughs> I'm right, right? Do you know that there be over 20 puns in Shakespeare's Hamlet? Yeah, most of them terrible. Uh, you know who this be? No. This here be Sarah Bernhardt. Wait, wait, no, 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 not Sarah Bernhardt. It's the great French actress? Yes. The first woman to play Hamlet in film in 1900? She said Hamlet is the brain ceaselessly warring against the reality of things. That's why I'd be best played by an intellectual woman. God, I can't believe you did that again. <laughs> oh, and here be the school of non so near. Who played Hamlet in 1924? She played to all the lonely women who endure worn out conditions and discover all too late that it be better to live as an outlaw to than be a slave. <laughs> and okay, here be this skull of Anna Dixon who championed racial equality and played Hamlet in 1982. I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but, but I, I, I find it hard to believe that all, all these great actresses are buried in, in, in the same... That's right! They all be in the same grave. Dig deeper and you'll find the first open lesbian to play Hamlet. Charlotte Cushman, who played the Dark Prince in 1861. And deeper still, you'll find Fanny Furnival, the first woman to play Hamlet, in 1741. They all be here. I take it this be a dream sequence. Oh, destroy. 
over your failure as you wandered the streets of New York for hours. Then you lit a cigarette, but you forgot you already had four sticks of Nicorette in an hour. You received a fatal overdose of nicotine. Fatal? Okay, make that part up. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Something to joke about. I, 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 no. No need to lose your decomposure. Ah. Get it. Stop it. Just, just stop. Oh, look at the time. I must be going. It's like the middle of the night. Where do you have to be? Night school. Don't say it. I'll be working towards my MFA. Masters of Fallouts. <laughs> Get it? I'm not an artist. I'll be a fallist. Oh, oh, and by the way, you're too young to play Hamlet. We are but passengers at a baggage claim, desperate to spot that bit of colored ribbon that separates us from the crowd. And as the lookalike luggage turns around and round, we can only hope that this inobstantial pagnet of a minor, minor globe near a short-lived sun, that this kind of another a noble end. And that we, before we shuffle off this mortal coil, will spy that bit of ribbon that tells us we found ourselves. Dear Sarah, why Hamlet? Why cast yourself in, in, in the role that would for sure bring condemnation for the critics? Oh, there it is. You cast yourself. Most of us accept the roles which, which were given, but you cast yourself and thus created yourself who are we if, if, if we do not boldly and deliberately choose our roles powerpoint a picture of jessica's niece with the caption emily astegard loves ice fishing the minnesota twins darts duck hunting pulled pork and grand theft auto hi me again Emily Ostergaard, Danish fondue. Did you hear really, really sad news? That boat carrying the cast of the young and the restless was attacked by pirates and lost at sea. That's right, Rosie and Gilda are dead. Oh, and did you hear? Patrick Stewart and I have become good buds. He often texts when he has problems with his smartphone. PowerPoint, a picture of Patrick Stewart with the caption as a text message. It reads, Dear Emily, I'm having IT problems now and then my texts are delayed by as much as 20 minutes. Suggestions, Sir Stu Dog. Dear Stu Dog, I'd be happy to help, but you've got to do me one favor. Tonight, my aunt is opening Hamlet. <laughs> um, a break a leg text from you would be awfully nice. <laughs> XOXO. <laughs> a few months later, Stu Dog got me tickets to see another production of Hamlet he was in. I didn't get it at all, not even most of it, but I'm glad I went. He met me at the stage door after. He said, Hamlet is a great play because it speaks to you in different ways at different points in your life. I told him that at this point in my life, because of Hamlet, I look at things differently. We have a choice, don't you know? Tonight, are you going to graze in an unweeded garden or are you going to dine with Shakespeare? In short, isn't it time that you and I turn off the television and seek better company? He thought that was pretty darn cool coming from a 14 year old. <laughs> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth be but a liar. But never doubt I love you, Patrick Stewart. 
PowerPoint, the picture of a theater row black box in New York City. The caption, tonight, Shakespeare's Hamlet, running time four hours. Please be advised, tonight's performance has no intermissions. The hair-strong Hamlet hung his hat in the hall. 30 minutes, house open. Thank you. I did, in fact, play Hamlet once. I was your age. It was the first production ever staged at the Great Mooseneck Shakespeare in the Park Theater in Great Mooseneck, Montana. They staged Shakespeare the way Shakespeare intended, outdoors and no intermission. PowerPoints, a picture of Gwen playing Hamlet when she was a young woman. The caption reads, Gwen Doorway, age 29. Horatio had just said, Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. When there was this disturbance in the audience, I cracked an eye. The audience was pointing up. There, above the stage was a gigantic flock of 20,000 starlings. PowerPoint, a picture of a starling. The caption reads, starling, scientific name, Sternus vulgaris. Just as they passed over, the stage manager played the cue for the loud trumpets announcing Fortinbras's entrance at the end of the play. Did you know starlings can be spooked by trumpets? And that when one starling shat, the rest are highly open to suggestion. We were bombarded by so much bird poop that hazmat crews had to be called. PowerPoint, a picture of a starling and tons of bird droppings. The caption reads, contained in starling droppings, E. coli, salmonella, Christopasolis, and paratuberculosis. The audience dry cleaning bills bankrupted the theater and it never reopened. Who is Hamlet? Hamlet is a woman because she, unlike most men, has fewer absolutes. And if taken too far, we lose the name of action. It's Hamlet's feminine side, which he himself condemns, that makes her so enduring. And who are you? Jessica. Do you have friends? I had one. I, now I got two. Are you violent? Rarely. Regretful. Sometimes. Funny. Knock, knock. Who's there? A woman choosing her roles boldly. Break a leg, sweetie. Gwen, I, I just want you to know that I read that your Hamlet was, was really good. Someone even wrote that you were as good as Sarah Bernhardt. And where did you read this? Wikipedia. <laughs> then it must be true. <laughs> a bright tingling from Jessica's iPhone. It's a text. She reads, PowerPoint, a picture of Sir Patrick Stewart with the caption as a text message. It reads, Dear Jessica, I hear you are opening, opening Hamlet tonight. Break a leg, Patrick Stewart. Holy crap.
The harlot's cheek, beautied with plastering art, is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than is my deed to my most painted word. Oh, heavy burden! I hear her coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's catomaly, the, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of love is in the spurn that patient merit makes when she herself might her coitus make with a bare bodkin. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long. Who would fartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from who borns, no travel returns, and makes us bear those ills we have then fly to others that we know not of. This conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sicklied over with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment with disregard, our currents turn awry and lose the name of action. It begins to softly snow, not over the entire stage, just over Jessica. She looks up at the falling flakes and beams through a gentle tear. The lights fade. End of play. I completely botched that monologue. I completely botched it. Like, I know it, no but way. I didn't uh -uh. oh. You were completely awesome. <laughs> like, I had it memorized oh, like, lip sync. And I was able to speed through it, but I was like, oh, shit. Sorry. No, you it. No. It amazing. Shush your mouth. great. You hush. I was like, where am I in this? Where am I? <laughs> 